Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a stunning black and white portrait in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is all about the black and white portrait. Now there are a ton of ways to do this, whether you're in Photoshop, in Lightroom, or on your phone or in camera. Today I'm gonna to show you my favorite technique for creating black and white images. To start off, we're gonna show you the basics of the black and white adjustment layer. We're gonna show you how to use the sliders as well as how to use presets. Next, you're gonna learn how to add some tint to those black and white images, and we're even gonna show you how to use black and white adjustment layers in different blending modes. And to make things easier to follow along, we're providing the image that we're using available on flurn.com for free download. All right, let's get into the tutorial. So here we are in Photoshop, we've got a beautiful portrait and the first thing I wanna do, and pretty much the only thing we're gonna do, is convert it into black and white. So to do so, I'm gonna to go to my adjustment layers and then go all the way down to where I see black and white. And it's go ahead and gonna automatically convert my image to black and white. Now, at this point, you're done. If that's all you wanted to do is make it black and white, that's totally cool. But this episode is about showing you the advanced features within this dialog box so you can fine tune your black and whites and make them perfect. Okay, so what am I talking about when I say fine tune your image? Well, here in the black and white adjustment layer, we have sliders for each of our different colors between reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magenta. Now, if you're working with skin tone, it's a good idea to stick with the reds and the yellows. So you can see how adjusting the reds both brighter and darker really do a number on the skin tones, but in a totally different way than the yellows. So the real key here when you're working with skin tones is to find the balance between the reds and the yellows to where the skin tone looks natural. See, that does not look natural at all. There we go, a little bit on the natural side. This looks like a little bit on the infrared side. So using the balance to try to find the area that we like, you know what? It looked better with the reds a little bit lower and the yellows a little bit higher. There we go. So if we're working with skin tones, reds and yellows. All right, so we have some other colors I wanna edit in my image. Let's go ahead and turn our black and white adjustment layer off. And here we can see we've got reds here in the background and we've got some greens. So if I turn this back on and I change my greens, we can see that changes the green value right behind our subject. So something like that it doesn't look that great, but we could go a little bit darker and that's kind of helping my subject stand out. Now, if you don't if you're not sure exactly where the sliders are, like if you're not sure, like I don't know if there's any cyan in there, what you can do is actually grab this tool right here and choose areas in your image. For instance, I'm gonna click here and drag to the left and the right, and it's going to make this area either lighter or darker. We can do the same thing with her skin. So if I click here on her forehead, click and drag this to the right, it's gonna make that area a little bit lighter. There we go. If I click and drag something to the left, it's going to make it a little bit darker. So if you don't feel like using the sliders on the right, if you just feel like grabbing different areas of your image, this is the way to go. Now, keep in mind, this is not local. It's not gonna change, like if I grab her hand, it's not just gonna make her hand brighter and darker, okay? It's gonna make everything that's a similar color in the image brighter and darker. You can always use layer masks. If you decide you just wanted her hand darker, you could use an adjustment layer and a layer mask to do that. But by default, it's going to affect all the colors of that specific range. All right, so we've got our settings dialed in for the black and white adjustment layer. Now it's time to add some color or some tint. So here in my black and white adjustment layer, I'm gonna click on this button that says tint. There we go, and it's going to add some color to my black and white. Now it's not gonna bring the original color back, it adds this over top. Now this color doesn't really look good at all, so we're gonna click right here, and you can choose really any color you want. If I wanted a, a, a deep blue, I could totally do that. We're gonna stick with right here in the oranges, there we go, oranges to yellow, and we're gonna add a little bit of a sepia tint. Now, I find that the more saturated you go, it tends to look a little bit, well, just bad. So I tend to stay here towards the left as far as my saturation is concerned. There we go, let's hit okay, and we're just gonna turn this tint off and back on. And if it's too much, which in this case, I think it is still a little bit too much, we're gonna bring this back a little bit to the left. I like it black and white to be a little bit on the warm side, but not too crazy. Yeah, that looks awesome. So let's say you've got your black and white adjustment layer perfectly dialed in and you don't wanna change it. In fact, you wanna be able to use this on future images in the future. <laughs> what we're gonna do is show you how to use presets. So to save this as a preset, I'm gonna to go to my menu, which is just these three arrows with the three lines with the little down arrow here. We're gonna click there and I'm gonna to go to save black and white preset. All right, and we're just gonna call this portrait. All right, sepia black and white. There we go, 
And we'll stick Flirt on there because I just want to. All right, we're going to hit OK. So now, if I decided to delete this adjustment layer, let's just go ahead and delete it. And I want to create a new black and white adjustment layer. Let's just go to our black and white. So we're starting pretty much from scratch. But here are my presets. You're going to see I've got all these presets that are built into Photoshop. And then here on the bottom, we've got Portrait, Sepia, Black and White, Flarm. So we're going to click there, and it's going to go exactly to where we had it before. And another note on presets, if you're not sure where you should start with your black and white, it's a good idea to just click right here on your preset dialog and go through a few of them. You may like this blue filter quite a bit. You might like infrared quite a bit. I don't like that at all, but <laughs> neutral density doesn't work either. A green filter, not so much either. So I'm actually a huge fan of just like doing it yourself and seeing what's right. But if you need a good place to start, these presets are a great place to start. <laughs> we're going to go back to our portrait black and white sepia. So while we're here talking about the black and white adjustment layer, I want to show you a trick that I actually really love working in Photoshop. It actually has to do with color, but using a black and white adjustment layer. What we're going to do, let's go ahead and make this black and white adjustment layer invisible. I'm going to create a new one here. So black and white adjustment layer. Now this time, you can see it's the exact same thing as it would have been before. We're going to change our layer blend mode from normal down here to luminosity, which is going to affect the lightness of the image. Now, because it's set to luminosity, it's not affecting the black and white. But what I have now is a really amazing set of sliders that I can use to affect the lights or the darks of my reds, yellows, greens, blues, magentas, everything individually. And I find that editing skin this way is actually really, really nice because you can get results very, very quickly. So again, this is a black and white adjustment layer. I just have the, the layer blend mode set to luminosity. There we go. And now we're adjusting our color. So really cool way you can take adjustment layers, play with the blend modes, and get totally new results. All right, guys, we got a couple more things to do to this image, and then we're going to be done with our black and white portrait. So let's go ahead and make this layer invisible. We're going to stick with our black and white portrait for now. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm actually just going to go to our gradient tool, our gradient tool, and I'm going to choose the foreground to background gradient, which in this case is black to white. So we're going to hit OK. Um, I'm going to add a really cool vignette to this in a way that I, I don't think I've ever done on Flurn before. So it's always cool when I can do new things. All right, so we have a regular layer here. We've got a gradient going from black to white, and we are on a radial gradient. So if I click here interface and drag out like that, basically we just have a little bit lighter area here and darker area there. So I'm going to change my layer from normal down to something like soft light. And we're going to see what an effect it has. Let's try something like overlay. <laughs> uh, way too much. All right, let's go ahead and bring our opacity down a little bit. What we can do is use this as a little bit of like a vignette to draw more attention to my subject's face and less attention to the border of my images. And if you need to remake it, not a big deal. Just click and drag. Let's just change this back to normal so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. There we go. If you need to remake it, just click and drag again, and it'll make you a new, a new circle. So you can go large, or you can go small. Let's change this back to soft light. There we go. Very cool. It's a really quick way of making a vignette and also like drawing a little bit more attention to the face. There you can see off and then back on. All right, guys, and that's it. This is a beautiful portrait. We don't have to go crazy with it. It's a black and white. It's supposed to be classic, and in my opinion, this is a great portrait. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before and the after. Here's our before, images in full color, and here's our after with our sliders adjusted perfectly to get the right skin tones and a vignette added over top. All right, guys, and that's all there is to using a black and white adjustment layer in Photoshop. Just remember these key tips. Start off adjusting those sliders manually. It's gonna give you a good idea of where skin tones fall between reds and yellows, and also how to adjust other colors in the image. And don't forget to click on the hand tool. This will allow you to click on your image itself and drag left and the right to make those areas either lighter or darker. If you want to add some tint to your image, click on that little tint box and then make sure to change the color to make it perfect. If you really like what you did with the black and white adjustment layer and you want to save it for later, just go up to your menu and go to Save New Preset. And finally, guys, don't forget to head to Flurn.com where you can download this sample image and our sample preset that we created in today's episode. So if you want to follow along, learn with us, it's the perfect way to do so. Plus, get a cool image out of it too. Thanks so much for watching today's episode, guys. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn and you want to learn more Photoshop and photography, just click on the screen right now. It's a subscribe button. We'll just send you free stuff from YouTube. It's really, really great. It's not annoying crap. It's just, it really is just free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. You really can't do wrong. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, just leave it in a comment right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. We'll learn you later.
Bye everyone. Where we make learning photo. <laughs> Learn.com.